Well, hello, friends. I'm Robert, and this is Ruger. Together, Ruger and I spend a lot of time riding, camping, and packing across the nation. Sharing our adventures with you is what we love, as well as helping you get out on the trail and have adventures of your own. That's what we do. Topographic maps have a special tool on them to help you visualize terrain features. It's these little brown lines. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to read them. Today, we're going to talk about using maps to plan a ride. You know, to me, navigation is one of the most important outdoor skill sets. And I think it's also one of the ones that we as horse folks tend to overlook. And we worry about how to be our mule's best friend, what to take along with us. But navigation, it gets forgotten. But if you truly want to make sure you get home in time for dinner, stick around. We're going to have a great conversation. Ruger agrees. But first, a quick shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. If you haven't joined the community yet, please click that subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now let's talk maps. Topographic maps are a little different from the maps you may use to get across town or see on your truck's dashboard. Not only do they show you trails and roads, once you get the hang of reading them, Topographic or contour maps also show you three-dimensional terrain from a flat piece of paper. Pretty nifty. Contour lines are how this is accomplished, and they're what make topographic maps special. Contour lines are these brown lines drawn on the map that connect points of equal elevation, meaning if you physically followed a contour line, your elevation would remain constant. You'd neither go up nor down. Let's get started with the easy stuff first. By looking at how the lines spread apart and come together, you can get a really good idea of what the terrain looks like. When the lines are packed tightly together, that tells us that the elevation changes a lot in just a short distance, so therefore the terrain is steep. As the lines spread apart, the elevation changes more slowly, so the slope is much less. Easy peasy, right? Big part of navigation and map reading is just matching up what we see in the world around us with what we find on the map. With just a little insight into these contour lines, you're going to be able to plan your rides and camping trips with ease. Let's check out some common terrain features. This is a peak or a hill. It's just an area of high ground. From the top, the ground slopes down in all directions. Peaks are illustrated by contour lines forming nesting or concentric rings. The inside of the smallest closed ring is the top of the hill. This is a ridge. A ridge is simply a line of high ground that slopes. Think of a series of peaks in a line that slowly go down. Contour lines forming a ridge tend to be U-shaped or V-shaped with the closed end of the contour line pointing away from high ground. Next up are saddles. No, not those kind of saddles. The kind of saddle that we ride over, not sit in. A saddle is just a low point between two areas of higher ground. A saddle is illustrated on a contour map by contour lines that kind of look like an hourglass. Next up are valleys. A valley is a stretched out groove in the land, usually formed by water, that has high ground on three sides. Valleys are illustrated with contour lines by U or V shaped patterns. The closed end of the U or V always points upstream or toward higher ground, and again, generally you'll find streams running through these. You know, those little blue lines. Here's another one, a depression. A depression is a low point on the ground. It could also be described as simply a hole in the ground that isn't a lake. Depressions are generally represented by closed contour lines that have tick marks, they're also called hexure lines, that point toward the low ground. And now for the last three features to get you started as a navigation pro. The baby valleys that hang from the sides of ridges those are called draws, and they're kind of like a valley, but much less developed. The opposite of a draw is a spur. I think of a spur as a baby ridge that hasn't yet fully grown into a full-fledged adult ridge. And lastly, cliffs. Steep drop-offs are shown on contour maps as a series of lines that converge together. I don't want to ride here, I think. It's going to take just a little bit of practice to become a skilled contour line reader, but it's going to pay off in the long run. One of the easiest ways to get comfortable with contour lines and interpreting them is to take a map of the area that you like to ride in. As you're on a ride, pick out areas that you can see in the real world 
and match them with what you find on your map. It's going to make learning your contour maps and your topographic map information a lot easier. To learn more about reading a topographic map and having a better ride and camping trip, you can also come to Trailmeister Trail Clinic. We have clinics across the U.S. and even internationally. Just visit the website for more information. I hope this was helpful for you. For more information on trail riding and camping with horses, as well as the largest guide to horse trails and camps in the world, please visit trailmeister.com. Happy trails!